Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the 14 books that I read in the later half of December. This is my December wrap up, but I did read more than these 14 books in the whole month of December. I have a mid-month wrap up if you would love to check that out. I'll link it down below. I talk about the first 10 books that I read in December in that video. I also just want to give a little brief uh, promo for a second. If y'all don't know, I do have channel memberships. They are uh, down below in the description. There's a, like a join my channel link and there you can be a member of this channel. When you join my channel, you are able to get early access to every single one of my videos as well as exclusive weekly reading vlogs. I film every single day. I post a weekly reading vlog every single Monday. And if you are a channel member of mine, you are able to see those. So if you would love exclusive content from me and uh, early access to my videos, be sure to join my channel memberships down below. I just wanted to remind y'all that that is an option. If you are uh, wanting to join channel memberships, totally okay if you don't want to. Uh, don't feel pressured whatsoever. I just wanted to let y'all know and remind y'all that that is an option for you. Anyways, let's get into the reads that I read at the reads that I read, <laughs> the books that I read in the later half of December. I'm going to be going in chronological order, by the way. So let's get started. The first book that I read after my mid-month wrap up is The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. I actually talked about this in depth in my five-star prediction vlog, which was the last video that I posted in 2022. So you can know my thoughts for this book as well as one or two others in this wrap up. In that vlog, this is an age gap romance where the woman is older and it is her falling for her pool boy, who is also her best friend's son. So this book is chock full of forbiddenness and a whole heck of a lot of good steaminess. <laughs> if you want to know more of my thoughts and my rating for this book, you can go check out the vlog link down below. I was then in the mood for an alien romance, so I decided to pick up Madness of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. This is her third book in the Horde Kings of Dakar series. This is actually one of my buddy reads from December, and this was a buddy read with Victoria over at Victoria's Romance Reads, who is one of my dear sweet friends on here. I absolutely love Victoria. If you are not following her yet, you totally need to. We share a lot of similar tastes in books, so be sure to check her channel out. I will link her down below. Like I said before, this is the third book in an alien romance series, so I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I will say I am just loving this series, and I believe Victoria and I are going to be buddy reading all the rest of the books, like one book a month, until we're done with the series, so I'm so excited to do that with her. This is the romance between Davik and Vien. So Davik is known as the Mad Horde King. Horde Kings, there's a few of them on this planet. Um, they have their own separate camps, but they're leaders of these different camps of people on the planet, of the Dakar people. They're aliens that are very similar to us, except they're like bigger, have gold skin and have tails, and they have a lot of different customs. Anyway, so Davik is one of the Horde Kings, but he's known as Mad. Uh, people think he's crazy because he can see things that no one else can see. He one day bumps into a human named Vienne. She has silver hair, which is unheard of. Some Dakar people even think that it's a curse to touch someone with silver hair or to be in close vicinity with someone with silver hair. So he becomes totally entranced by her though. She has been a slave for quite a long time to these evil aliens that live on the planet. They're not Dakar people. Um, they're a different kind of alien species, but she has been sent by these evil aliens to send a message to the kings of the Dakar people. She is sent there to give a message and her body is kind of on a ticker. They gave her this poison and if she does not return back to her owners by a certain amount of time, like she will die. And so she is on a time limit here, but then Davik becomes totally entranced by her and obsessed with her and just will not let her go. This is the first book in the series with a really big magical element in here. Both characters have some sort of magical ness, magical powers to them. And that was very cool to me. I absolutely adore this hero. This might be my favorite hero from this series. I just loved him and how hard he fell for this woman and how possessive he was of her. These men are so obsessive and I am obsessed with them. <laughs> I also really love Vienna in here. She was so determined to save her people and so determined to do the right thing, even if it would cost her her life. There are a few trigger warnings in here. This whole series has trigger warnings, so please be aware. But this one specifically has SA, blood, gore, violence, and slavery tropes. You have alien romance. There's a brooding hero. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There is magic involved. There are scarred characters. In order to become a horde king, you have to go through the, the, a bunch of these like rituals and um, like trials and the last trial is uh, you have to be strong enough to 
go through 100 whips on your back. And so all these Horde Kings are heavily scarred on their back. All the Dakar people also have tails. So there are tails in here and you have a worshiping hero. Davik totally worships the ground that Vian walks on. I gave this book five out of five stars. I was obsessed with it. Next, I picked up Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Liza. This was Brie and I's book club pick for the Chronically Courageous book club. We have a whole entire live show of us discussing this book, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it. This is the romance between B and Janie. Their friend group really tries to set them up even though they don't like each other. Um, and so they decided to fake date and to kind of get back at their friends. This is also a Shakespeare retelling of Much Ado About Nothing. That is one of his plays that I've never read before. This also has really great autism representation in here. B is autistic. And that was the main reason why we picked this book for our Chronically Courageous Book Club. We picked books with chronic illness rep, neurodivergence rep, and disability representation. And that's all I'm gonna leave you with with this book because we have like an over hour long live show for a discussion on this. I will link the live show down below if you want to just watch the live and get our real-time thoughts. You can also know Bree's thoughts in that video. I will mention the trigger warnings in here. I believe these trigger warnings are listed at the front of her book specifically, by the way. Um, So you have ableism, abusive relationship in the past, and then uh, present for a side character, emotional abuse, physical violence. There is one scene of physical violence. It's not on page, but it's mentioned that someone gets beat up and hurt. Um, and then there is anxiety representation. For tropes, you have anxiety rep, an artistic character, B. She is an artist. Uh, you have a character with glasses, Jamie. You have a doctor who is Jamie. Uh, you have fake dating, great banter. You have a hero falls first in this one. There's also LGBTQ plus representation. B is pansexual. And then you have a medicine family and neurodivergence rep. And this is a sibling series. The other books in the series will be about B's sisters. I decided to pick up Enticing uh, the Scrooge. I was about to say Mr. Scrooge. No, it's The Scrooge by Jessica Kane. This was her recent like holiday novella. This is just a really short novella about the descendant of Ebenezer Scrooge uh, finding the love of his life. He ends up like seeing this girl outside of his home like begging for money for the orphanage she is trying to take care of and he immediately becomes entranced by her and falls in love with her on the spot. This one was just okay. There's just a few things that I didn't really care for in this book that weren't my favorite. Um, I felt like, like the age gap aspect in here was a little bit like weird, just weird to me. And I normally am someone who loves a good age gap. Like give, I, I, I know about Daddy Zeus. Like I love age gap romances. This one just didn't, didn't hit the right spot for me, I guess. And I just felt like things happened way too fast for my liking. So I gave this one three out of five stars. Towards the end of the year, I was really trying to read a few books that I got on the Audible sale a while ago and um, audiobooks that just have been piling up in my Audible library. So I decided to pick up Monroe, finally, by Gressley Cole. This is her 18th book in the Immortals After Dark series. This is her paranormal romance series a series that's chocked full of paranormal creatures like vampires, valkyries, werewolves, like a, like I am in love with this series. If you love paranormal romance and you have not checked these books out, what are you doing with your life? Like they are everything. They're so good. They're one of like the best series I've ever read from ever. A bunch of you probably saw people read this book at the beginning of the year because it was released all the way in January of 2022 and I did not pick it up until December of 2022. I'm really bad with reading new releases, so that is totally a me thing, and I just really wanted to be in the right mood to read this book, so that was all the way in December for me. This is the romance between Monroe and Kiran, or Ren. At the beginning of this book, Monroe gets captured by some evil, evil dudes, and they end up bringing his mate to him. In this world, he's a like it, by the way, just kind of like a werewolf creature, your Lyke only has one mate in the entire world in your entire life. And they end up bringing the uh, woman that is supposed to be his uh, to his, basically to him, um, in hopes that he will turn her into a Lyke by biting her so then they can get full control over him and her. He also realizes at this point that she has been taken from the past. Like she does not live in the same time period as them. They traveled back in time to get his mate to bring her to him. But then she dies, she dies. And it is Monroe's lifelong goal now to go back in time and save Kiarani before she got taken and brought back to him in the present time, if that makes sense. So it's Monroe's lifelong goal now to go travel back in time to get his mate. He's in for shock though, when he goes back in time to get her 
and it's her wedding day. <laughs> and man, she is not the woman he thought she was. Like she is this kick butt like mortal who has trained her whole entire life to kill immortal beings. So she's not very happy when this Lyke immortal comes and kidnaps her on her wedding day. I really just love these characters and this romance and that's what I'm gonna leave you with because I don't wanna spoil anything about this book and this series in general because I feel like it's a series you need to go in as blind as possible. For tropes in here, you have an alpha hero, most definitely. Um, Faded mates, great banter, it's hate to love. The hero falls first. You have a kick butt heroine. Uh, there's kidnapping, a mating bite, it's a paranormal romance, and involves time travel. I gave this book five out of five stars. I really wanted to get back into the Christmassy mood, the holiday mood, so I decided to pick up Dear Monster Claws by um, Maeve Black. I saw this on Tiffany from Tiff Talks Pages, her uh, Neverland Pixie Instagram account, and she was just talking about this novella on her stories, and I was like, sold immediately downloading it, reading it now. Um, this is basically a romance where um, our heroine, who's like a cupid, ends up falling for a uh, dragon demon creature who's Santa Claus. <laughs> like this is Santa Claus. Uh, like the uh, jolly old man is a total facade. This is what Santa Claus, this is who he really is. This is demon <laughs> dragon creature. Our heroine in here is Zoe. All she wants for Christmas is to fall in love, to find love because it's notoriously known that like cupids help people find love, but they don't themselves get love. And so she wants it so badly. So she writes a bunch of letters to Santa Claus asking the only thing she wants for Christmas, which is to fall in love. The hero in here, who is Santa, <laughs> he ends up uh, reading a bunch of her letters and is very intrigued by her and goes to see who this woman is. They kind of get in an exchange or a deal with each other. Uh, this Santa has kind of lost his Christmas spirit. And so she'll help him get his Christmas spirit back if he gives her love lessons. So I love a good love lesson trope. This was so cute and such a wonderfully hot, like monster Christmas novella. I could not put down. I think I read it all in one sitting. It's just a great read to read during the holiday season. And I feel like more people are definitely gonna read it next year during the holiday time. A memorable quote in here that I just love that we have, there's a part of me that wants to sink into his skin and stay there forever so cute. Okay, for tropes, this is a Christmas romance. It's a cute but hot, very hot read. <laughs> it's a foodie romance. They do a lot of baking and cooking in here, which is so cute. And that author even has like some recipes at the beginning of the book, I'm pretty sure, for some of the things that they cook in here. It's a grumpy sunshine. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There are love lessons. It's low angst. There is a mating bite. It's a monster romance. The heroine has never been kissed before and there definitely is a size difference. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I buddy read Shameless Duke by Scarlett Scott with Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. This is another one of my friends who I am buddy reading a bunch of books in the same series with. So we're gonna be buddy reading um, the next book in this series in January and then the next one in February and so on and so on until we finish the series. And then maybe we can read other Scarlet Scott books, Rachel. We'll see. But this is the fourth book in the League of Duke series. This is basically a series about uh, a group of Dukes who work for Secret Service and they are spies and detectives and help the crown and help take down bad guys, basically. So you met the hero of this book, Lucian, in the previous book. Um, he did something that wasn't just great for the league. So they assign him a partner and he's never had a partner before and he's kind of like pouting about it because he doesn't think he needs a partner, but he didn't do so great in the last book. So they have saddled him with a partner. He is in for a shock when his partner shows up and it's a woman. This person is a woman and she's also American. Just, just the cherry on top is that she's an American. <laughs> These two immediately fall into like a bickering, dislike, annoyance relationship. And then you can see on page, it slowly develops into a beautiful love story. The banter in this book is immaculate. Like one of the best banter relationships I have ever seen in a romance. It was top notch. However, Rachel and I were talking about this. We loved the bantering relationship at the beginning and the beginning half of the book. And then once the characters got together, the bantering we love so much kind of fizzled out. And we feel like the magic in the banter was just like lost in the other half of the book, which was a little bit of a disappointment. And I will say the mystery plotline of this book is definitely my least favorite 
in the whole entire series. I've just read Better Mystery Plotlines by Scott Scott specifically, so that just wasn't my favorite. But I did love buddy reading this with Rachel, and I can't wait to read the other books in this series with her. For short girl warnings, you have kidnapping, there is a hostage hostage <laughs> situation, there is physical violence and bombings. Tropes, uh, you have detective slash spy character. Uh, there are different social classes. There is a duke in here. There's great banter. It's hate to love, and this is a historical. I give this book four out of five stars. I wanted to get into holiday romances again, so I picked up Set the Record Straight by Hannah bottom young which was her new release in december this is actually my first book by this author and it will definitely not be my last and i totally blame caitlin from the love librarian she has totally hooked me onto this author and i have the first book in her like first series uh on uh, my january tbr and i can't wait to read it anyway i did pick this one up and it is great. This is a short Christmas novella that is sapphic and friends to lovers, which friends to lovers is one of my favorite tropes ever. So I adored this. This is about Clara and Evan and they are each other's oldest best friends. They grew up together and have been friends ever since they were kids. The two of them need fake dates for their own respective reasons. So they decide to fake date each other. However, after what they think is a fake kiss that turns into a real passionate kiss, uh, things change. They realize that maybe they don't want this to be a fake situation at all. Evan has actually been like crushing on Clara for years, but she's always put her feelings to like the wayside because she believes that Clara is straight. But once Clara has this kiss with Evan, she realizes I need to uh, sort out my priorities maybe because uh, that was probably the hottest kiss I've ever had in my life. I also want to mention I love the representation in here. It's like chock full of amazing representation. Clara has ADHD and Evan is autistic. And as a person who just graduated with her education degree, I loved Evan's whole discussion about the education system and her like being a teacher and then her classroom because she's a sped teacher, a special education teacher. And I just loved the scenes that we got in her classroom with her very hilarious students. I loved that. I also just loved this romance in general. Their progression from friends to lovers was so sweet. I loved it. I also just love how Hannah Bonham Young was able to characterize and form these full flesh characters in such a short amount of time and only like 200 pages. There are a few trigger warnings in here. There is homophobia, familial estrangement, and mentions of religious oppression. Evan has not the greatest home life. She was kicked out of the house, I believe, around the age of 18 when she came out to her parents. She has a lot of like trauma around that, so please be aware of that. Tropes, this is a childhood friends to lovers romance. It takes place during Christmas time. There is fake dating. This is friends to lovers. There is neurodivergence rep. There is no third act breakup. This is sapphic and it is definitely a winter read. I gave this one five out of five stars. Next I have Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. This was a read I decided to just pick up on a whim. It's been my TBR for a while. I saw it at any play and decided to pick it up. This is the romance between Lucian and Emma. Lucian is an ex-hockey player. He experienced a really bad concussion at the end of his hockey career and he is devastated that he cannot play anymore um, and he now experiences very bad chronic migraines so there's that representation in here um, but he ends up living on his grandmother's estate she has an estate that can be rented out as like staycation homes and Emma just so happens to be one of the people who is going to stay there Emma is an actress who is kind of like Amelia Clark on a uh, Game of Thrones so Khaleesi um so she is basically like that kind of character but in the show her character gets killed off and she is kind of lost with her career doesn't really know what to do so she decides to take a vacation at this place that Lucian is at and the two of them find solace in each other they fall for each other and they realize that uh, this fling that they have isn't really a fling and they don't want it to be anymore this was just a really sweet and cute contemporary romance and man do i love me a hockey player who can bake lucian here loves to bake like that is his new passion and i loved it it's so cute i love baking so i love reading about a like hunky hunky man who loves baking too and is so passionate about it. For tropes in here you have baking, there's a brooding hero, there's a caretaking scene, you have a celebrity in here, uh, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine, he's a hockey player, there's meddlesome family members, his grandmother is very meddlesome in their relationship. There is a one bed scene, they have to go to a wedding I think and they have to share a bed. And there's a stability representation for concussions and migraines and this is a sports romance 
I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I picked up Nimona, which is a graphic novel by N.D. Stevenson. One of my oldest friends, she gave this book to me, lent it to me a year or two ago. Like we were really exchanging graphic novels for a while there. Like I gave her pumpkin heads, she gave me Nimona, and we just been like, I also gave her Saga, I think. Anyway, um, we were just exchanging graphic novels that we really love. And it had been a while since I read a graphic novel and I was seeing her in December and I was just like, oh, I'm meeting her up. I have to give her back this book, but I haven't read it yet. So I read it all in one night and I had a lot of fun. This is just a short graphic novel about Monomona and her like teeping up with this super villain um, who's not actually a super villain. And they do a bunch of things together. This is just a really cute and sweet graphic novel. Be aware though, this is not for kids. Uh, like it gets pretty gory on page and there's a few curse words in there. So just please be aware. But um, I just thought this was a very entertaining grade that I gave four stars to. Next, I read Misadventures uh, with a Professor by Sierra Simone. I just wanted to read another Sierra Simone book and a short novella audio that I could get in before the end of the year. So I picked this one up. This is just a really short like student professor romance. So our heroine ends up getting this internship with this professor in England to kind of help him organize uh, his very extensive library for his research. Um, but on her way to London, she has one night when she like lands, she has one night of freedom basically before she has to go to her internship. And her goal is to get rid of her V card. And she ends up bumping into this man on the street. <laughs> she kind of like tells him her plan and he is more than willing to oblige her. And uh, they do some stuff and uh, her problem is solved and she goes on her merry way. But she is shocked when she gets to the place where she's gonna be an internet. And he is the professor who is now her boss. This one was just okay. I had fun reading it. This is definitely hot. <laughs> if you want a hot fun read, definitely pick this one up. Sierra Simone does not disappoint in her hot read. So I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I picked up From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. This is also a book in my five star prediction vlog that I posted at the end of 2022. If you want to know all my thoughts about this book, you can go check out the vlog. This is the last book that I talk about. So if you want to just scroll to the end, you can do that if you wish. But I did not love this book. <laughs> I did not give it five stars. And you can watch that video if you want to know why, if you don't know about this, this is a figure skating romance, uh, the romance between Jasmine and Lukov or Ivan Lukov, and they are enemies. This is a slow burn romance, a thick, thick boy. They end up having to be skating partners, even though they do not like each other. And um, yeah, that's what I'm going to leave you with. That's the main summary in here. But don't get me wrong. I enjoyed a lot of this book, but there is a bunch in here that was not my favorite. Next, I read How the Duke Saved Christmas by Anna Harrington. This is one of my new favorite Christmas romances. It was so sweet. This is the second chance romance between Clara and Michael. Clara, a year ago, was in a carriage accident that left her injured. She is now not able to use one of her legs. It is completely straight now. Like she's not able to bend or move it. She has no function of like the muscles and nerves in her leg at all. After this accident, she has realized that uh, she is not going to be a good duchess. She's like, how can I be a duchess or a good wife to Michael? when I am like this now, when I'll never be able to walk again or even have children again, like she's been told that she is barren now. And so she decides to break things off with Michael. Both Clara and Michael are absolutely devastated when she breaks it off and Michael doesn't know the real reason why she broke it off. He thinks it is because she blames him for the carriage accident when that is not the case whatsoever. So it's a year later, it's Christmas time and Clara and her brother are on a carriage ride to go back to her brother's estate because his wife is pregnant and about to give birth. However, the bridge that they need to use to cross a certain area of land has collapsed and they're stuck and it's about to be like a really bad snowstorm. So they seek refuge in Michael's home. Michael sees this as the perfect opportunity to woo Clara again and to get her into the Christmas spirit because Clara has kind of lost her light lost her light in life, lost her light in herself ever since her accident. And Michael kind of just helps her realize who she is all over again. I love Michael. <laughs> Michael is one of the sweetest heroes I've ever read about ever. Like he is amazing. He is so persistent and knows what this woman needs. There are a few memorable quotes in here. I have two listed, so I'll say them. Um, first is, I'll never stop loving you or trying to make you happy. And then you have no idea how much I loved you, how much I still love you, and that love for you could never be a burden. It would only ever be a blessing. 
I love Michael so much, y'all. I love him. Okay, so tropes in here. It's Christmas romance. You have a cinnamon roll hero. This is a historical romance, also a historical standalone, which is quite rare, I want to say. And this is a historical with disability representation and just disability rep in general. And you have longing. Both characters have been longing over each other for a while. And this is a second chance romance. I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then the last book that I ended up reading in 2022, I just wanted to sneak in an extra book. So I picked up His Muse by Cassie Mint. This was just like a short little novella about <laughs> this uh, girl who works for this band as like a backstage person helping putting things together backstage and the songwriter for the band uh being her stalker like stalking her on their tours and then she uh the tour's over she goes back home and he follows her all the way home and stalks her there and uh it was it was okay it wasn't my favorite it's like a 2.5 three star read there was like nothing special about this. That's all. That's all I remember, honestly. So anyways, there you have it. Those are all of the books that I read in the later half of December. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. And also if you plan to read any of these books, let me know, please. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the guitar emoji in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.